Today we answer two of the big questions and questions that we've been asked many, many times. Hi guys, I'm Roger De La Hart. Welcome to this edition of Venture into Lightroom, where we take a look at the various post-production methods we use in Adobe Lightroom. So today we're going to answer these two profound questions. And many, many times we've been asked, when is the best time to photograph in a forest? And how do I edit my pictures afterwards? Now there's no real best time, because that depends on what you're looking for. But if you were to give us a choice of times to go and photograph inside a, a forest, we pick overcast, drizzly conditions any day of the week. And the reason for that is that in those conditions, when it's overcast and drizzly, A, the lighting is just gorgeous with the soft light coming through the clouds. And then the rain, the drizzle, the mist, all of that wets all the plants, wets the land, wets the trees and the rocks and the streams. Well, of course, the streams are wet anyway, aren't they? But it wets everything and the saturation of colors is just mind-blowing. Now, if you want to even take that to another level, add a polarizing filter. In the forests, it works like a charm. We had a cold front come whizzing past us on the garden route uh, a few weeks ago, and we took the opportunity to head up towards Neisner into the Hotfeld Forests there, uh, to a little spot we know called Jubilee Creek. So we shot a bunch of pictures there, including this one of the creek itself, of Jubilee Creek. Now, as you will have seen before, if you've uh, watched some of our previous videos, like this one, if you click on the, the top right hand side of the screen here, there's a, a video on editing our wildlife photographs that we've done, is we click the auto button just to see where Lightroom will take us on it. So let's do that. There's the pic. We reset it to zero and I'm going to click auto and that's what it's done. And it's not bad. Now, it doesn't always get it as close as this, but it's invariably gets you to a place where it's pretty good to start. Now, if you notice at the top left-hand corner of the histogram here, there's a little icon, a little exposure warning that says there is some shadow clipping. And if we click that to make, switch it on, you can see it here in the rocks. There's a little bit of clipping in the shadow areas. Now, I wouldn't worry about that. A little bit of clipping like that is, is not an issue. More importantly, on the brights, there's some clipping up in these bright areas here. That's a little bit worse than having this clipping because they, there's no detail in these areas. And if you print this picture, all you're going to end up with is white blobs in those areas. So if we hold the shift key down, double click whites that takes care of that i'm just going to switch these warnings off now so that we don't have them worrying us now this is the first thing i want to fix because as you're looking at the picture we've got these lovely diagonals going through the stream itself and this tree trunk both that bank all take you to this area of the picture right into it now, this area here is, is pretty much as bright as this area. So it draws your eye out of this area. Now, the way I'm going to fix that is to click the graduated filter. And I'm going to drag up from the bottom right and just move that into place. Now, I've got the, the, the exposure way up and it helps you see where the effect is going to take place. So if you double click the word exposure, it zeroes that. And now what we can do is just darken that area so that it, it goes away. There we go. With the decrease in brightness, as we make things darker, so the saturation tends to increase. So I'm going to pull back the saturation a little bit here, about 10, 12, 13 thereabouts. And I'm also going to come back on the texture and the clarity, about 15 or 16 or something like that, just to take the edge off that that area there. If we want to, because we can, if you now click on brush, 
So it brings the brush tool into the graduated filter. And I'm going to click here and do a raise. And what we can do is get a, a small soft brush. And we can just paint out some of these areas of this fern frond here. Just so that it's there. And it still looks quite good. Just a little bit so we can bring that into the picture. And just click. Right, so that area is not darkened along with that graduated filter that we pulled up into that area there. So there we go. We've brought that, that front back into life. And I'm going to click again on that graduated filter up at the top right there. And there it goes. Now, what next do we do to this? We've got all this light falling onto these tree ferns here and this other vegetation. So I just want to bring that out a little bit here. I'm going to go to the brush tool, which is this long one across the bottom of the histogram. Increase the size of it into quite a large brush. Don't worry about the amount of light I'm putting in here because that's just showing us where we're putting it. A little bit over there, I think. There. And that should do it. Double click exposure to zero that. And now what we can do, we know where we've painted. We can just increase the, the exposure there a little bit. Not too much, because we don't want it to look obviously doctored, obviously fixed. Now we're getting there. What I'm going to do next is click New, a new brush. And I'm going to reduce the size of the brush a little bit. And I'm going to start painting here onto this tree trunk that's fallen over. Something like that. And again, too much, but double click the exposure word the, here on the top left. And now we can increase that just a little bit, just to make it a little bit brighter. And I've only got up about 0.24 of a stop there. But I'm going to come up to about 19 on the, um, on the texture and probably about 10 or 11 on the clarity. Now that's just emphasized the, the texture of that bark there. Um, just to use it to drag your eyes into the picture. Again, I'm going to click new because I just want to bring out some detail in the um, in the stream here. And we're going to paint this whole area okay. just just because I want to bring out some some detail in that stream. There we go. Again, too much. Double click the word exposure. That zeroes that setting, and now we can increase it a little bit. I'm not going to, just a just a smidgen, just to make it a little bit brighter than the surrounding areas. And I'm going to increase the texture just to bring out the texture of these pebbles in the water. But what's happened is that because we painted over this whole area, we've painted these rocks as well, and that to me is too bright. I want to get rid of that brightness on the, on these rocks so that we've just brightened this water. So what we're going to do is click Erase. And here we go. Again, smallish brush, also quite soft. And I'm just going to paint these rocks out. So if you look here, there is the mask that you can see. And if you look what's happening here, we're just painting out these rocks here to make them a little bit darker. There we go. So now we're applying the filter to the areas in red. There we go, something like that. And you want a quite a soft brush so that you don't have any hard edges there, so that you notice things. Okay. There we go. That should do it. We'll get rid of that um, that overlay. And there it is. That's probably a little bit bright. I'm going to come back down to about 0.25, a quarter of a stop increase. And there we go. That's what it looks like. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to get rid of that, switch that brush off, and I'm going to put some post-crop vignetting. So there we go. There's the vignette. You can see it. It darkens the area, or if you want to, you can brighten the area. I'm going to come down to about minus 15 or so. That should do it. 
And I'm then going to go to our radial tool. I'm going to draw an ellipse here, like that. And then if you take the your cursor out of the center part of the area, down to the bottom there, you can see it turns into a little double-sided arrow. And I'm just going to rotate that ellipse. And then again, click on exposure to zero it. Okay, so now we've got the filter in place. I'm going to just brighten the area. Because remember again, your eye naturally goes to the bright area. So I want this area bright so that your eye goes down the, the stream. Right. I think we're about there. One other thing you could do, let's go back to our brush. And now I'm going to hold down the space bar and you can see the cursor turns into a little magnifying glass and I'm just going to click and zoom into these tree trunks here and just paint a little bit of brightness into them. Not too much because I just want to make them a little bit more. And we're only going to do a little bit of an increase there. Click, hold the space bar, click and drag. And here on this tree trunk, there you go. You can see it in the in the center of that yellow area down here. You don't want it too bright because then you'll start to notice what's happening. Okay. Something like that. Hold the space bar. Click again, and that zooms out. Double click exposure, which zeroes that area. And now I'm going to just drag that up again about a quarter of a stop. You you don't want to go too much. You, you know, you start to do that and it and it starts to look a little bit false. So yeah, just about you know, about a third of a stop should do it. that to get rid of it and there we go that's what we we've turned the picture into we started with that notice again how this area becomes distracting it your your eye naturally moves down here but if we take that away if we darken that area your eye doesn't go there anymore so guys that's it I hope you've enjoyed this session uh, if you've enjoyed it please give us a thumbs up underneath the video. Also subscribe if you would like to be notified of more videos that we, we publish. Please click the little bell icon down there. Hope you've enjoyed the session and we'll see you on the next one. Enjoy. Ciao.